As Ziggy said earlier, he's been diving into the film. He's listening to podcasts. He's listening to interviews. Ziggy knows more about J.J. McCarthy than any man on this planet right now. I think I know J.J. McCarthy better than his mother. <laughs> Probably. Maybe better than he knows himself. Wait, Ziggy. Are you related to Ziggy Wilf? It's not how it works. Oh, that's first. What? <laughs> never, 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 never so, I J.J., oh. he's having his ups and downs so far at Vikings OTAs. Uh, <laughs> the size is there. The mobility is there. The arm strength is there. I saw a tweet from Alec Lewis that said one thing is very obvious. Um, he said the the cliche that the ball jumps out of his hand maybe applies to J.J. McCarthy better than he's ever seen before. He said the dude is major juice in his tweet. Um, so there's been a, a fair share of mistakes, fair share of, of, of glamorous moments with the Vikings so far. Well, Ziggy, what's your, what's your first main takeaway from all these hours of research on J.J. McCarthy? My main takeaway is this. The Vikings have a plan and they are sticking to it. Right. A lot of people are worried seeing J.J. McCarthy currently third or even fourth on the depth chart. He's not taking first team snaps. Right. Those are going to Sam Darnold, some to Nick Mullins, occasionally even to Jaron Hall, though J.J. McCarthy has been ahead of him. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is they have a developmental plan. That developmental plan is when we can get more into the details on this, but they're focusing a lot on his mechanics. They're focusing a lot on the playbook. And I think after seeing this, it is very unlikely he starts week one because they have things they want to do and they're going to do it right. They do not want to do the mistake that some organizations have where you throw your rookie quarterback out week one and they're overwhelmed because they've got NFL playbook. They've got mechanics. They've got all these things you need to keep in mind at a position in the NFL where if you are one second behind as a quarterback, just one second the play's over and you're probably getting crushed by some huge defensive end. <laughs> you need to be 100% in the game and all of this stuff needs to be automatic. The Vikings are not going to make that mistake of putting him out there right away. Yeah, and, and there's a time and place for when experience does matter, when you need to get reps, but there's no rush to getting to that point right now, especially for someone as young as J.J. McCarthy, just 21 years old. Uh, I do think Sam Darnold... You know, briefly on Sam, I think he's a great guy to have in the locker room mm -hmm. for JJ as well. It seems like he's yeah. completely embraced him. You know, they're going to Timberwolves games together. And O'Connell said that he was excited when they told him that they were drafting McCarthy. He even said that I can mentor this kid because I've been in the same position as a high draft pick. Uh, Sam Donald, look, he's only 26, but just, it's nuts. Sam Donald's a year older than us. I wait. I feel like he's like 30. Oh, no, no. Sam Donald feels like he's been around forever. But he's he, only 26. No, he was born June 5, 1997. Like Sam Donald is a young dude who's out there hungry, trying to get his, uh, his wow. real chance with a good team now with the Vikings starting. You know, Carolina and the Jets were disasters. And I just think to to be able to, to approach this season with the mentality of, okay, I'm competing. Like I'm trying to rejuvenate my career, but I can also be a mentor for this guy who that I know the Vikings want is their franchise quarterback. He seems to be handling everything great, and I, I'm really rooting for him next year. I'm curious to see what happens if he gets off to a hot start. You know, like, like what happens in Minnesota with the quarterback, a possible controversy um, down the road. But yeah, Sam Donald, I think, has been great. I've I've really liked listening to Sam Donald because you can just yeah. see his growth as a person and as a player. Like the guy clearly has some scar tissue. Right. He's talked about how being in a functional organization helps him. But, you know, I was listening uh, on Purple Insider. They brought in somebody who had just been interviewing Sam Donald. One of the questions he asked was, what do people not know about what it's like being a top pick in the NFL draft? And Donald's response was, how much time you got? <laughs> right. Like this guy has seen it all. And oh, if you yeah. look at what the Jets did to him. New York. Yeah. I mean, it was it was argue it was one of the worst situations a top rookie draft pick has been in in the past twenty years. It was that they actively sabotaged him for years in New York. So look, it's I'm not saying Sam Donald's going to be great. I don't think he's going to light up the world or anything. But considering they brought him in, it's very different than Kirk Cousins, right? They brought him in with an understanding that he would be mentoring the guy, and he's excited to do it. I really think having Sam Darnold around could be great for JJ McCarthy. I like uh I'm rooting for him. He's got two he's got two revenge games right off right off uh right off the bat, right? San Fran and then the Jets yeah, in does. the first five weeks. He does, one at a time. Five I'm not sure if San Fran's a revenge game. Uh, the Jets are definitely Jets a are. Game. Jets are for sure, yeah. I mean San Fran, he'll want to beat him. We go like I was Brock's backup for the for you now this this time. 
Imagine well, Sam just comes out. He's five and zero, oh. both at home, right? Dominant beats the the Forty Niners, the well, Texans, and Aaron Rodgers. If you check out my or our Vikings schedule prediction, I have the Vikings at four and one <laughs> yeah, with, with the with the, with the lone loss at Green Bay. <laughs> I know, I know that. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all rooting for Sam, obviously as Vikings fans, but as as a uh, person as well. Ziggy, when we talk about JJ McCarthy, um, from you know a talent standpoint here, it seems that the athleticism and the arm strength are notes that people are saying jump off the page It's and are translating nicely to the NFL. Yeah, I mean, you will talk about J.J. McCarthy a lot and some of the benefits and things he needs to work on and all of that. But the thing, as you say, that has stood out was the athleticism. There are two things. One is the arm strength, right? We knew he had a decent arm coming out of college, but seeing him at the NFL level, you know, you can watch videos on Twitter of him throwing balls next to Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold is a talented guy, right? He is an NFL quarterback. J.J. McCarthy's balls look so much better, <laughs> right? You see ball <laughs> after ball <laughs> coming yeah. out. Was that intentional? That had no to be intentional. But the way that the way the man the way the man is handling the balls is just completely <laughs> different. They're so quick. You know, he's got his hand on him and immediately they're out. Okay. Uh, he, so, okay. 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 he handles lie. balls <laughs> fantastically. I will say he handles balls fantastically. Uh, it, I would just like, it is rare that you see guys come into NFL training camps and genuinely look like top throwers. And of course, there's so many things to work on. We'll talk about that. But high ball velocity is one of the most important things in the NFL. You need the throw to get out quickly. Because I, I don't know why you're laughing. I mean, we're like, off the rails at this point. Well, like, here's the thing, right? Defensive backs in the NFL are so quick that if your throw is slow, they will be all over that. They'll be I mean, all over his balls. I, it's impossible of a conversation. With yeah, you guys. this is unbearable. It's, I mean, I'm just trying just to talk football. This. Okay, no, okay. No, no, okay. That is okay. you started. Let's go back started. here for a second. Let's go back here for a second. Um, and that is impressive because when you're throwing next to Sam Darnold. Uh, an NFL he, quarterback. No, no, and and when you listen to people talk about Sam Darnold in practice, again he struggled in in his career, but in practice, Sam Darnold has one of the prettiest balls you'll see. I mean, look, when you compare, see, Sam, and I'm I'm serious, he does. Like you hear people scouts talk about, they're like Sam Darnold is a great thrower. Um, so for for JJ McCarthy to be impressing people next to someone like Sam, it, it's a great sign for the Vikings. When you compare. Sam Darnold's balls and JJ's balls. It's mm-hmm. like comparing one A and one B. I and mean, they're just both miraculous. Uh, you know, and I, I'll also say we're <laughs> yeah. talking about arm strength and that's important. But also, we haven't seen what Kevin O'Connell can do of a mobile quarterback. And JJ McCarthy, he's not Lamar Jackson. He got nothing like it with it. Josh Dobbs. And and it was fun when uh, it was fun until oh, you know, yeah. Dobbs fell apart, which we all knew was going to happen. But if you can, if J.J. McCarthy, his speed is not elite, but it is good enough to beat defensive ends chasing after him. And it's good enough to get first downs. And when you have a quarterback who, when things aren't going great, can step out of the pocket, keep their eyes downfield and either deliver that deep shot or else run for a first down, that puts the defense in an impossible position. Because if you want to leave someone covered, you, we've seen this of Josh Allen over and over again. You've seen it of Patrick Mahomes over and over again. When you have a quarterback who can threaten both with their legs and with their arm, if you cover the deep ball, they'll make the smart choice. They'll get the first down, new set of downs. You can do whatever you want. If you go after them, they can deliver a great ball on the run, throw deep, be really effective. And you saw J.J. McCarthy do this occasionally in college. But seeing the combination of quick feet and effective throwing on the run, I think with once he fits into the Vikings offense, there could be a lot of exciting stuff there for creative play caller. He's a bigger dude, too, than people realize. He's 6'3", 220. Like, I, I don't think most people realize McCarthy is 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 large. If I can see Blake Horn in the backfield, though. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm, so I'm so excited for Aaron Jones. I, the, more I, the more I hear about this Vikings team, this roster, the more you see... As long as Justin Jefferson, someone asked in the mailbag a while back if Jeff, they, we expect Jefferson to remain a Viking long term. He will, 100%. They're going to give him the contract he wants. Uh, once once he's back and Hawkins think it's back by week five or six, it sounds like people are saying. I mean, this Vikings offense really is loaded. Great offensive line, too. Jordan Addison, great number two. Um, whenever McCarthy steps in, he certainly has the talent around him to succeed. It's just now a matter of getting him comfortable and having him uh, be in a position to succeed at the NFL level. I- I'm really excited. 
The thing that they're spending the most time on right now, besides the offense, which even Kirk Cousins said was tough to learn, Kirk Cousins, NFL veteran, great at learning offenses, is the mechanics. The thing that J.J. McCarthy I saw on video struggling with the most is the Vikings are trying to change his stance and shotgun. And I think the mechanics were the one thing that Michigan didn't quite get to with him. You know, the Vikings want McCarthy standing with his left foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the, the Vikings want McCarthy standing with his left foot forward in shotgun, right? In college, he stood with his feet even. And small stuff like that can make a huge difference between throwing in rhythm, making a one, two, three drop work, all of that stuff. So as we say, the reason why I think they're spending so much time and don't want to rush McCarthy is because when you have, and anybody who's ever learned a sport or anything physical does this, when you have to keep in your mind, okay, I need to put my left foot forward. Okay, I need to make my steps exactly this much. Okay, I need to look this way, turn this way. That kind of stuff requires a lot of mental focus, and it's mental focus you just can't give in a game situation. Mm, it's repetition. So if you want if you want quarterbacks to get good mechanics, you have to drill it over and over again, patiently in practice. And if you put J.J. McCarthy out on the field right away, even if I think he might be able to be an effective quarterback, that stuff's just going to fall apart, and he'll never win. Yeah. Yeah. And this is a time of year, too, where you're going to see people reacting like to, to the smallest things. I sent a, a text into our yeah. chat today, a tweet. Someone's like, the Vikings grilled McCarthy today because he, he can't hold on to the football. R- yeah, well, what, let me tell you, McCarthy <laughs> was 16 for 18 in practice today. And the two throws he missed were overthrows that seemed to me were likely due to the mechanics, Mm -hmm. right? So even if he does have some incompletions and inaccuracies, that's to be expected as, keep in mind, J.J. McCarthy has played football a certain way for years. He's won a lot of games. He's made a lot of passes. Trying to build that from the ground up is tough. You see Anthony Richardson has been trying to do this. He talked about how during his rehab with the Colts, they used it as an opportunity to completely rebuild his throwing motion. And that stuff takes months. Yeah, so so you, you can't you can't react too much to any news you see right now. We're still at the start of this. Yeah, don't don't Great listen. Update. There are going to be Great. clickbait aggregators from probably Packers fans coming yeah, out yeah, here right. talking about how JJ <laughs> McCarthy sucks. He's, I I I have liked what we've seen so far. I know you know another word for OTA optional training exercise is practice. <laughs> we are reacting to practices, not a game. But we've we have seen guys come out and practice and just absolutely poop their pants jj mccarthy has kept everything inside and under control Jeez. no stains on him do you know so what? i'm excited to see what he's able to do do you know what's really funny is i was thinking about this like ziggy's down in virginia right and we're up in new jersey and we really think about how crazy technology is like we're sitting in your basement in new jersey with our headphones on and we're able to hear Ziggy talking to us in Virginia. Oh, so it's not about something that happened in Minnesota. Yeah, about today. something happened in Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. Can, like, what, can I say one last thing about JJ McCarthy, away? please? With this uh, throw velocity and with this footwork and these new mechanics, I'm just going to tell you right now: the crossing routes to Justin Jefferson will be beautiful. Timing and throw velocity are the two most important things on those routes. And you've seen Paul Justin Jefferson with Kirk Cousins. He feasted on those routes. Unguardable. That was the that was the bread and butter of the Vikings offense. I cannot wait to see JJ McCarthy light up the NFL with that throw. Light up. It's gonna be so beautiful. Because your your throat hurt a bit, Ziggy. Let's move. Look, man, look, I, I, I don't know what you want from me. I'm excited <laughs> about JJ McCarthy. Uh, look, I, I am too. I am too. And it's only going to get better as the, the offseason continues.